Can you know if you're pregnant before your positive pregnancy test? Today we're going to go over all of the earliest pregnancy symptoms. My name is Jess. I'm a certified nurse midwife and right now I'm seven weeks pregnant after our second frozen embryo transfer and I am filming in bed in my jammies today because the first trimester nausea and fatigue are kicking my butt right now. I did have a feeling that I was pregnant before my positive pregnancy test this round and after caring for thousands of pregnant women, these are the earliest symptoms that I consistently see. First on the list is fatigue. I don't think anyone escapes the first trimester without feeling really, really tired, and that's actually frequently the cue for a lot of women that they need to take a pregnancy test. The fatigue tends to hit hard and fast, so you may find that you're wanting to nap more than usual or that you're wanting to go to bed earlier than usual before you get your positive pregnancy test, and that was certainly true for me with this pregnancy. Second on the list is mood swings. I feel like I have seen dozens of TikToks, Facebook Reels, YouTube videos where women are feeling more emotional than usual, and then one of their followers will kind of snarkily say like, oh, maybe you should take a pregnancy test. So then the woman does take a pregnancy test on camera to pr prove the snarky follower wrong, and well, surprise, they are pregnant. This one has been super consistent for me. With my current pregnancy, I had a full-blown mental breakdown probably about five days after embryo transfer where I just did not feel like myself. In theory, yeah, I could have taken a pregnancy test at that point. It may have been too early for it to show up yet, though. Uh, my husband did tell me later, though, he's like, that was the day I thought, mm, she's pregnant. And he was right. <laughs> Third on my list is implantation bleeding. This one is pretty hit or miss, and to be honest, I did not even really believe in it until we did IVF. Implantation bleeding is really light pink vaginal spotting that you'll notice usually just when wiping um, a day or two before you miss your period. As a women's healthcare provider, the reason I didn't really believe in this is because the embryo is so, so small, the thought that it could cause any noticeable bleeding when it was implanting seemed really unlikely to me. And so my logical explanation was that, well, maybe your progesterone is starting to drop and that's causing spotting. But then once the implantation occurs, it stops the spotting because the embryo is then releasing HCG and the body realizes, oh, we need to increase our progesterone and make sure we don't start a period. However, with both of my embryo transfers, my first one ended in a chemical pregnancy and then my current one that I'm pregnant with, I did have that very, very faint spotting a couple of days before my positive pregnancy test. And I know my progesterone wasn't dropping because I was on a continuous dose of progesterone. So I really don't have another explanation for it other than implantation. That being said, I never experienced implantation bleeding with um, any of my IUI pregnancies or spontaneous pregnancies. And it's not a symptom I hear from patients very often either. So I think this one is less reliable. Fourth on my list is cramping, and this one is a lot more common than most women realize, especially if it's not your first pregnancy. A lot of women will come to their first prenatal visit with me really concerned that they were having cramping and feeling like they were getting feelings like their period was going to start, but then they never had any bleeding, and then they realized they were pregnant, but the cramping continued. And I, I know that was certainly true for me with my daughter. I had period-like cramping basically the entire first trimester. But cramping is actually quite common, especially if you've been pregnant before and your uterus has already stretched out before. Typically, you'll have more round ligament pain and just general aches and pains throughout pregnancy. But the general rule of thumb is that if you're cramping but not bleeding, it's usually okay. Obviously, if you're concerned, please, please, please talk to your healthcare provider. Number five on my list is breast tenderness. This one's a little bit tricky because a lot of women will experience breast tenderness leading up to their periods just because of the increased progesterone in their body. But what I find is usually different about pregnancy breast tenderness is you will also get these shooting pains like through your nipples and through your breasts. That's like a pins and needles sensation. Breast tenderness is frequently one of the first pregnancy symptoms to show up, and then I'll see a lot of women get concerned when their breast tenderness fades at the end of the first trimester, and women will all the time tell me like, yeah, I always check my boobs to see if they still feel tender, and I definitely did that when I was pregnant with my daughter, but it is normal for this symptom to go away after a while. Last but not least is weird cravings. I don't know why, but the second that I'm pregnant, a dill pickle sounds like the most delicious thing in the entire world to me. And that also happened with this pregnancy. Before I had my positive pregnancy test, there was one day I was at work where I was like, I got to buy a jar of pickles on the way home. This is another one that a lot of my patients report to me uh, that makes them realize that they need to take a pregnancy test because they're craving something they would not ever normally want or a combination of foods that they usually wouldn't put together. I love talking with my patients about their weird cravings. I just think it's really interesting. So I always ask like, what are you craving? And hands down, the number one answer I get from women is hot Cheetos. Ew. Of course, the only way you're going to know for sure is by taking a pregnancy test. So if you are having funky symptoms and your pregnancy test is negative, you might need to just give it a day or two and retest again. 
most of the other typical pregnancy symptoms like nausea, bloating, constipation aren't going to hit until after you've had your positive test, like usually around the six week mark. But occasionally I will have women come into my office at just like four weeks pregnant, like just missed their period and they're already puking their guts out. So that certainly does happen. If you had a wild pregnancy craving that made you realize you were pregnant, please drop a comment below. I would love to hear it. I post new videos every week about infertility, pregnancy, and my own IVF journey. So please like, subscribe, turn on the notification bell so you don't miss an upload. Next week, we're going to talk about how to afford IVF if you feel like it's out of your budget. Thank you so much for watching.